So today we have bitters as our theme for those of you who are tuning in on Facebook. I put the small bottles in the front because those are actually our main components today. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to tell the people in my house. Hey! So, key component to making any cocktail online is yell at everybody that is in your house to be quiet so that you can think properly and teach people to get drunk. Now that we've done that, <laughs> I'm actually going to make a drink just to start us off that has nothing to do with the theme, but it was a request from one of my class regulars that goes by the name of Jack. He has been loving Scofflaws. I believe that's how you say that drink. While he's in quarantine, it's a really good drink. It's kind of tart, but sweet and boozy. So it's all, all good, all right. But I was gonna put kind of my little spin on it. Can you can find recipes for it all over the internet. The ratios are all over the place. So I'm gonna just show you guys what I usually do. Um, so for a Scofflaw, you're going to need whiskey. I like mine with rye. A lot of people make them with bourbon. You can use Irish whiskey, Canadian whiskey, but I'm gonna use rye whiskey. So pretend this is a tiny bottle because our class is supposed to be about small bottles. <laughs> but bartender needs a drink, so we're gonna start off making this. But so I'm gonna do two ounces of rye whiskey. And then we're gonna have some dry vermouth. I'm going to use one ounce of this. Usually this cocktail calls for grenadine. I'm not a huge fan of traditional grenadines. Um, like just the standard ones you get everywhere. They're like bright freaking red, incredibly artificial tasting. I love pomegranate grenadine, but I don't use it often enough. So what I usually do instead of using grenadine is save all of the syrup from my Lucerno cherries, and I just hold that onto that in my fridge, and anytime I have a new ready, I just sub this stuff out. So, I'm gonna use a half ounce of Lucerno cherry syrup, not to be confused with Lucerno cherry liqueur. Put that directly in there. And this cocktail is definitely, as usual, best with fresh juice, as opposed to Bottles, but if that's all you have, that's fine. So, I shake this up. This is fresh juice. So, we're going to use a three quarter ounce of the lemon. Put that right in there. So, this is, I mean, very close to the standard recipe. Um, the choice of vermouth will vary. Most people use Neuilly Pratt. Um, I did have that, but currently I'm working with Susano. Um, and, like I said, I do switch out the grenadine for the Luxardo cherry syrup. And now we're gonna shake it. We're gonna fill our shaker about half of the time. I'm gonna shake it for, oh, I don't know, about 10 to 15 seconds. And I'm gonna strain it into a coupe. This is also really nice if you can chill your coupe ahead of time, because it'll make the drink a lot nicer. All right, so my little take on this, other than the slight alteration of ingredients, is I am a sucker for a flamed orange, like nobody's business. I adore flamed oranges, always have. I went through a phase where that's the only way I would take my old fashions at home was with a flamed orange. So I like to do my stock load with a flamed orange. So to do that, I'm taking a white peeler. I'm gonna get a piece of orange peel and I'm gonna use a grill lighter. This is a really simple technique. Some people would consider this flare, but you just kind of want to start to heat up your orange peel. Sometimes this can be a dud. It kind of does depend on your fruit or your lighter for that matter. It looks like I'm out of lighter for it. So we'll see if this even works. But you're basically trying to heat up the oils in your peel, and then when you go to express the rind, oh, there we go. Oh. We're gonna pretend that I'm lighting this on fire. So essentially, you heat up your peel, and then 
You press that like that. Oh, it actually works. Yay! <laughs> I was kind of concerned there for a minute. And then I'm going to put that in there. Very simple cocktail. Has nothing at all whatsoever to do with our class today. But Jack, that's for you. I know you've been asking for weeks to have me make one of these. So cheers. Hope you're out there watching. Gosh, that is really tasty. Oh, yeah. It's really good stuff. So I'm going to set that over here. And that is the bartender special of the day. But we're going to get on with it. I absolutely love bitters. I love bitter flavors. I love bitter liqueurs. You have so many different categories when it comes to gin that are citrus based. The most popular ones most people have heard of are Picari or Aperol. You have vegetable based, um, chocolate based, caramel based, herbal based, such as Jägermeister, Cinar. There's so, so many. But you will often see at bars tiny little bottles like this with bitters. This is not the same as a liqueur. Some fancy bars put these in unmarked little glass bottles with little dropper pour spouts on them and those work as well. But I really like using these as a base for my cocktail. It's not an easy thing to do though because the flavor profile is wildly complex. But what I thought we would do before getting into the cocktails that I designed, I wanted to start us off with a Trinidad sour. It is what got me into this idea. It's a cocktail based entirely on a Vistura bitters. Traditionally, this is something I would drink more around the fall. Um, it has like, I guess it has all those baking spice notes. So it's really nice around that time of the year. However, I live in an eternally cold house because I like my AC super low. So I just pretend it's fall and we drink these often. So to make one of these cocktails, you are going to need Angostura bitters, which is going to be your base. If you want to try and make these more often at home, then instead of leaving the little dropper spout in here, you can remove it. I like to leave it in, but that's because I use them for both purposes. If I know I'm just going to be making batches and batches of Trinidad sour, then I'll go ahead and pop this little stopper off. But, so for the Trinidad sour, bear with me, this is going to seem like a lot. We're going to use an ounce and a half of Angostura. And like I said, this is our base spirit. So it's quite a lot. There's about 70 dashes to an ounce. So that means we're technically doing like 30, like 105 dashes, give or take. Which is another reason you can pull out that little stopper if you want to. All right, so we have our Angostura bitters. We're going to pour that into there. And now we are going to be using a little bit of a different spirit that's not a bitter in here. We're going to add a little bit of dry whiskey. So I'm going to add a half ounce of dry whiskey. And that's just going to help kind of round those flavors of the Angostura out. It gives them a different profile to play with. And then we're going to use Gorgeat. So this is a very classic Gorgeat you can find in a lot of places. It's called Gifford very popular brand. Orjat is an almond-based syrup. You can make your own at home. It's incredibly easy. I can give you guys a recipe if you would like one. My personal favorite version of the Trinidad Sour involves a pecan orjat that I make at home all the time. But we're keeping it classic so you guys can kind of see how I got into this idea. And we're going to use a full ounce of orjat, which it's basically our sweetener. But if you think about it, orjat is made from almonds. Um, classic orgeat is made from almonds. So those nuts are playing with the baking spices. That whiskey is giving us some caramel tones from being aged in a barrel, and that's going to come together really nicely. And then we're going to balance it out with a three-quarter ounce of fresh lemon juice. And we're going to shake this quite vigorously for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then we're going to strain it into a coupe. Uh, or a cocktail glass of your choice. And the Trinidad Sour doesn't have a garden. It's just served up, which means without ice in a cocktail cup or glass. And I'll show you why. There's this beautiful swirl pattern after it gets poured. So we're going to shake again 10 to 15 seconds. Now, this is an incredibly 
potent in flavor cocktail. It's definitely not everybody's cup of tea. Very strong in flavor, very strong in booze, very complex, but incredibly beautiful to look at. And in my opinion, quite tasty. I love a good Trinidad salad. Now, if you don't happen to have orgeat on hand at home, I have made this with a simple syrup and it's good. It's just not quite the same because those nut components aren't there. I'm gonna bring this over. As you can see, it's a really deep red. It almost looks like I poured a glass of port wine and it gets this really light line of froth on top. I'm sure you guys can't really tell there, but it's beautifully swirly right here. It gets really frothy from being shaken. I love this cocktail. I'm obsessed with this cocktail. And I've tried doing, when I first started playing with bitters as an idea for a base spirit, I tried making this, swapping out the Angostura for any other bitter. And it's just not the same. Like I did the exact same recipe and instead of Angostura, I used orange bitters. Wasn't the same, was way too bitter. Um, I used spiced plum bitters. I thought that would be really nice. Terrible. Um, so as far as the Trinidad sour goes, I have only ever really liked it with Angostura bitters. I'm sure if you found another aromatic bitters, you could definitely try it. If you find a combination that works, please pass it along. Um, I've played with it a lot, haven't found anything that I'm particularly fond of, but the classics sometimes don't need revamping. Sometimes they need to be just left alone because they're already great. So that's the Angostura Trinidad sour. We're going to move on to one of the ones that I designed for this class. I'm super pumped about this. I bought these bitters on the clearance rack at my grocery store, and I've just had them sitting there forever. Um, so we're gonna be using Bee Brothers Cranberry Bitters. And I call this cocktail the North Water Street Fizz. And the reason I do that is I got kind of the base idea for this from a cocktail called the Gunshot Fizz, which is made with Peychaud's. And it's a really nice cocktail as well. Recipe is online in a lot of different places if you would care to look it up. It is a bitter-based cocktail. I think it's based on two ounces of facial bitters, but um, I kind of went from their benchmark recipe to try to create my own. And then I did a lot of research into the Fee Brothers and they have a fascinating backstory on how that company came to be. Definitely make this cocktail and then go and read about them. It is got fire and a lot of death and a lot of reinvention and a lot of moving around. They moved around to tons and tons and tons of different buildings. And they changed their company name a ton. I think it started out as a butcher shop and then it became a saloon and then it was a deli and then they started selling liquor. Um, and then Prohibition came and then they came up with this really, really cool idea to get around that where they couldn't sell liquor, but they could sell the ingredients that you could make liquor with. So they would send a bartender to your house with a giant barrel and all of the things to make wine and you would set it up in your house and then you would be in charge of letting it ferment. And they're just such an interesting company to read about, very creative thinkers. And I really love that about them. And when I was reading through the history, the company um, officially changed its name to the Fee Brothers while they were in the North Water Street location. So I thought that was appropriate. That location later burned down but they made a comeback. And so we still have these bitters. So that's why I named this cocktail like that. So for the North Water Street Fizz, we're going to use one full ounce. This is a lower ABV cocktail just because bitters are actually quite high in alcohol content. Most people don't realize that. Um, they're similar to most bottles of like whiskey or vodka. They range between like 28 to 35. So if we're only using one ounce, that would make this a low ABV cocktail, but because it has a high liquor content, if you were using more than that, then it would no longer be that. So we're going to use one whole ounce of these bitters. And the cranberry bitters are almost offensively red. Like, I don't know how else to explain it, but they are so red. If y'all just see like the tip there, that's the liquid. It's, it's incredibly red. It's a very bright natural color, but it's still very, very bright. So we're using one whole ounce of that, and then we're going to use one whole ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And 
instead of adding sweeteners, I decided to opt for a juice that would allow me to sweeten the drink, but also add flavor. So we're gonna be using pineapple juice. So I'm gonna use two ounces of pineapple. And one of my favorite ingredients, we're gonna use flesh, fresh flesh. I know how to speak English, guys, sorry. <laughs> fresh blackberries. So I'm gonna put six of those in there. And that's gonna vary depending on the size of your blackberries and also how ripe they may be. So if they're kind of squishy, then six is good. But if they're really firm, you're probably not fully really ripe. So I would add maybe one or two extra. And you can muddle these, but I honestly get really lazy with muddling when I'm at home. I really rarely do it, if at all. I just like to shake the absolute crap out of anything in my shaker and call it a muddle. So we're gonna shake the absolute crap out of this North Water Street is. So our shaker, about halfway to three quarters of the way with ice. And when I wanna do a hard shake, I tend to shake very, very hard directly in front of me. And that's just because that's a method that I'm able to control a lot better. There's other ways to do it. No particular way is better than the other. It's just whatever's comfortable to you. So take the crap out of it for about 10 to 15 seconds. All right. Now for my favorite part. The color of this cocktail is so freaking gorgeous. Very much reminded me of Sangria. So let's serve it in this giant goblet, this white. So because of the blackberries, I am going to double strain this cocktail just because I don't want any chunks. So first, I'm gonna double strain this. Now if your blackberries are not incredibly ripe or if you don't shake quite as hard as I did, the cocktail will be more red in flavor, less purple. So either way, just in case you are making this and you look at the photos or the video and your color is different, that's entirely fine. When working with fresh ingredients, sometimes textures and colors will give you a different consistency. So we're gonna take our time. I like to tap the strainer. This is a very classic move that a lot of bartenders do. It just kind of helps it go through the strainer a little bit better, a little bit faster. You can use a spoon as well to just kind of stir the liquid that's in your strainer. That'll also help. Okay. All right. We're gonna put that in there. Over to the side. Now, now that I have this in my goblet or chalice, I'm going to put some ice in here first. And then I like to top this off with a Pellegrino soda. So I recommend to start off if you're much more into sweeter profiles of cocktails or if this is your first time having a bitter taste cocktail, I like to use the Pellegrino lemon soda or sparkling drink. They also have a blood orange that's really nice. They have a pomegranate one, they have a bunch of different ones. I tried it with the blood orange and it was nice. The lemon was a little bit more refreshing, but I'm actually going to try it with one of these. This is one of Pellegrino's newer ones called Marinti. It's more of a seltzer. So it's gonna be a little bit less sweet. And this one is peach and clementine. Pellegrino's not sponsoring this, but if anybody from Pellegrino is watching, and you want to sponsor me and send me sodas, I go through them all the time. So we're gonna add in about three and a half ounces, just pour slowly because it is going to want to fizz up. All right, and do that. I have a serious problem with Pellegrino sodas. When I first moved in to this house where I live now, I went to the grocery store, picked up a six pack of these, and then when we checked out, I got a coupon that was like a dollar off of two more six packs. So then I went back, and I got two more six packs, and I got another coupon for a dollar off of two more six packs. 
And I kind of lost it. I, mean, I just kept going in and out of the store until I had about 24 six packs of these sodas. And this continued for about a month. And then I'm assuming my local HEB got wise because they no longer print the two months. Oh, let's see Mr. Allen's showing up. What happened? However, I was at the store the other day and now they're giving out repeated coupons for these. So I went and I bought three or four boxes of those. And then I got a coupon and then I went back and bought some more. I'm not as much into the seltzers. They are nice though. Um, but yeah, so now I just have half of my pantry is Pellegrino sodas. So yeah, if anybody from Pellegrino wants to just, you know, hook me up so I can stop having an issue. So I'm putting some really thinly sliced lemons on the skewer here. And then I like blackberries and I love it when fruit soaks in my drink. And like I said, this kind of reminds me of sangria. So I'm gonna just put these other blackberries in there. And then at the end of my drink, I'm gonna have a little snack. Pop it off with a little more soda and bring it over to you guys to check it out. Just look at the size of that thing in the back. Yeah, that's good stuff. So this, oh, okay. So it's very different with the seltzer than the soda. Now having tried it that way, I would probably go back to the Pellegrino. I think that extra oomph of flavor because the Pellegrino sodas have like real juice in them does it does a much better justice to this cocktail. But with the seltzer, it's nice. It's a little lighter. Um, so if you're worried about like sugars or whatever, then definitely use the seltzer, but it's much better with the Pellegrino. That's the juicy one. But yeah, it's very, very wine looking, very sangria looking. So that is the North Water Street Fizz, guys. Oh my gosh, we're so close. So close. Let's see, we made the scofflaw, had nothing to do with our class today. Made the Trinidad Sour, which is how I got into this idea. We've made the North Water Street Fizz, which I'm really about. I drank like three or four of these the other day. I had to go buy a new bottle of bitters. Uh, but yeah, I, I know bitters out there. There's this whole world of bitters now. Everybody makes it. There's all these different flavors and different brands. And I know that Angostura, Peixos, and Fee Brothers are the probably the most classic brands that most people are familiar with. Definitely go out there and try some other bitters. I have a really bad habit of just buying bitters anytime they're on clearance anywhere. Because sometimes I'll buy bitters that are strange flavors, such as the, I have a plum bitters that I'm actually using for the cooking class tonight. And I use that in a cocktail that I designed for a special client. And it was great, but it's just been sitting there. You know, everybody usually has their like go-to bitters, depending on what they drink at home. I drink a lot of old fashioned, a lot, a lot of Manhattans. So I usually have Angostura orange bitters and I love black lemon bitters. However, cranberry bitters, plum bitters, they need a little bit more finesse. So if you see something on sale, get it, play around with it because these cranberry ones, I think they put me out like four bucks as opposed to maybe the 12 that they cost all the time, but still really tasty. I'm glad I got, I would still pay the full price. But now we're gonna go to my favorite one I've made this entire week. I'm calling this cocktail the kiddie pool because every time I drink it, that's where I want to be. I want to be sitting in my yard like an adult that can do whatever I want and drink in a kiddie pool. So this is going to be a shandy. I adore shandies. I think they're super tasty. I don't think enough of them are made. Before the shutdown where I was working, we had this entire category on the menu called two-fisted shandies because you usually get like the extra part of the beer or the chaser on the side because we fully encourage everybody to double fist their drink. But um, there were some really good ones on there. Honestly, some of my favorite cocktails I've ever had have been from that menu. So I kind of got to playing around with some ideas about different things I could be doing. And for this, oops, bigger. for this particular cocktail, um, I took Angostura orange bitters and then I infused them with strawberries. So bitters, like I said, just like alcohol, you can also make infusions. I wouldn't necessarily recommend infusing really complex bitters such as Angostura because it's going to have a really hard time fighting through the flavor profile that's already there. But if you have more of a one note bitter such as the cranberry ones that I've used or these ones which are the orange bitters, adding a little something to it can make it much more interesting. So I'm gonna go rinse out one of my shakers. I'll be right back. And then we're gonna make the kitty pool. If you have a kitty pool, this is the time Go fill it up, change into some pool shorts, and get yourself a glass. I'll be right back. 
Guys. So sometimes as a bartender or as a chef or just as a person of the industry, I think it's really easy to forget things that to us are second nature. So I have done this class before and I had one of the participants tell me that they did not realize they needed to clean their shaker in between cocktails. And while that might sound kind of silly to some of you, it doesn't sound silly to me because we all start somewhere and we all make mistakes. I know I've made a ton of mistakes. So I'm very blessed to have a bunch of shakers because this is what I do. If you don't have shakers, I'm pretty sure I've brought it up before. You can use a Tupperware container. Mason jars are my absolute favorite. You can also use like those protein shakers that have the little mixing bowl thing in them. But make sure you're rinsing all of your equipment that you're going to be using before moving on to a different cocktail. That way your flavor profiles kind of stay the way they're supposed to be instead of getting all muddy. So for the kiddie pool, we are going to be using a Hefeweizen. I picked up this one, it's from Munich, it's called Hofbrau. It's really nice. Um, you could do this with a Blue Moon, which is like an American Hefeweizen, it's not really classic. This would be really good with like a Celis White, which is a Texas Hefeweizen. It'd be good with, oh, what is the one I'm thinking of? From Germany, it's like, oh, I can't think of the name. It'll come to me and then I'll remind everybody what it is. But um, what, you want to do is have like a wheat type of ale. It can be filtered, it can be unfiltered. It's not really that big of a deal either way. You can also do this with a pilsner. Um, that would also be nice, but I just really liked the way the flavors combined with the Hefeweizen. So we're going to shake everything but the beer. So for the cocktail, we have one ounce of strawberry infused orange bitters. And if you go ahead and look at the flyer that I created for the class, which I do every week, it'll tell you what to prepare, what to do ahead of time, what to go purchase if you want to mix along with me. When you go to make strawberry infused bitters or even if you're making strawberry infused vodka, you're going to lose a little bit of the liquid that you put in there. So if you start it off infusing two ounces, you'll be a little bit shy. So it's always to go a little bit heavier. So you make sure you have enough for the cocktail you have in mind. So we're only going to use one ounce. Let's put that in here. And we're going to use a half ounce of our lemon juice. Right in our shaker. And some very simple, simple syrup. We're going to use a half ounce of that as well, right into our shaker. And now you can make this in any type of glass. I have a 20 ounce pint glass that I'm going to be using. You can use a Yeti cup. If you have a cocktail shaker, you can just drink it out of this side. I've done that before. I have no shame. But those are the only ingredients we're putting in here. So those three, the bitters, the simple, and the lemon. We're going to shake this up with a healthy dose of ice. a huge shake. And I'm going to carefully pour that to the bottom of my glass. And as you can see, it's this really pretty, pretty pink color. Then I'm going to fill the rest of my glass with ice. All right. Then we're going to open our beer. Slowly pour it over the ice. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are going crazy because they have ice and beer. However, this is a shandy. It's not a straight beer. So you guys can chill and put ice in it. And I really like this because you get this really pretty layered effect. Once some of this foam dies down, we'll bring it over and show you guys. But you get a really pretty layered effect. You'll have like this pink base, this really pretty like wheat beige in the middle, and then a nice little foam head on top of your cocktail. So 
I also would encourage you to try this. I had a really interesting beer last week. It was a dark Hefeweizen Bach. I don't know how all of that ends up in one single bottle, but it was basically like a darker, weeded, like Schreinerbach kind of type of beer. It was really tasty, but the notes are much, much different than a regular Hefeweizen. So it might be an interesting little twist to try. So I'm gonna top that off. And then very simply, I'm just gonna garnish this with an orange wedge. And that is the kitty kitty. I'll bring that over so you guys can see that. Just look at those colors. It's like this tequila sunrise almost, but way better. I also recommend drinking this through a straw. I should have said that. Just because right now all I'm tasting is beer. And then you just get a little swirl. I'm not going to swirl it because it looks pretty, but once you start to drink it, swirl it around. That way all of the flavors combine. And then you have like a uniform tasting cocktail. And don't forget, if you do serve it, I fully encourage double fisting your drinks. You can drink a little of this one, a little of that one, or drink this down. And if the flavor is a little too strong, add some more beer. You know, it's, it's build your own drink. It's like create your own adventure, but with alcohol. It's fantastic. So get out there and infuse some bitters, try some interesting stuff. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this project. You're probably going to fail a lot more trying to make cocktails with bitters as your base than you will with anything else, just because the flavor profiles are very complex. But the beauty of it is that the bottles are small and they usually cost anywhere between five to 12 bucks. I know there's some of them out there that are like 20, $30 for a bottle. Some of the bottles aren't even this big. Um, so maybe don't try it with one that's that expensive, but as a little fun pet project, you know, spend a couple bucks experimenting in your kitchen or in your bar. And if you want to come back and join me tonight, the cooking class I'm super pumped about, we're going to be cooking with bitters as well. So we'll be using different bitters than you see here. I'll be using spice bitters, blackstrap bitters, which have a big sassafras element. I'll be using Angostura and I'll be using peixos and orange bitters. We'll be making pastry and coffee and salad and meats, it's gonna be really, really cool. So come back later at six o'clock. It's also gonna be the last cooking show I'll be doing for a little while. We're gonna stick with just the bar for a bit. And yeah, I hope you guys are out there enjoying your beverages. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on social media. And if I'm not eight kitty pools in, I'll be sure to get back to you. And if not, I'll get back to you the following day. <laughs> but if you're on Facebook, I'm gonna go ahead and end the live stream and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.